Hello, hello. Welcome back to the Elisa Lucci Show, episode 86. How you doing? It's December 16th, nine days till Christmas. I can hardly believe it. It's the weather that's throwing me off here in New York City. It's like June outside. So if you're listening to this episode and it's June, just know it's the same weather in June as it is in New York City on December 16th. So I don't know. I don't know if it's the virus. I don't know if it's the weather, but it's throwing me off. Um, let me do the fact of the day. And then all this news is all over the, the, all of this news about the virus, the new strain shit shutting down in New York. We're going to get into it. Fact of the day. I never knew this. I have two facts for you today. The first fact is national cookie day is December 4th. Did you know that? Did you know that? Why are they making cookie day on December 4th. Don't they know that this is the time when women are doing their pretend diets? You know the diet. The diet is that you, it's the holiday diet, the pretend holiday diet. You ate too much at Thanksgiving. Then you go on a diet and to prepare yourself for what you're going to eat at Hanukkah and Christmas. So I'm on my pretend diet right now. And you know what you should do in the middle of this pretend diet um, span? You should throw national cookie day in there for us. Oh, it's horrible. But my diet's always a pretend diet because I just eat just straight through. I tell myself, you know what, at least calm it down between Thanksgiving and December. But no, no, I'm just eating straight through. Like I count my calories though every day, but I also have an emergency Snickers in my bra. You know what I'm saying? Okie dokie. So uh, did you know, okay, on that note, okay, on the note of Christmas, Santa used to wear tan, green, purple, and blue pre-1930. It wasn't until the, the, the very late 1920s and the 30s that, that Santa Claus has started wearing a red suit. And I have never known this before. I would see pictures, you know, pictures of old Saint Nick in a, a royal blue suit or a royal purple suit. I had no idea why. I just thought maybe the, everything was black and white and that's what the artist decided to color in once we got colorized. I had no idea. The reason why Santa wears red and white is because Coca-Cola started advertising their soda around the holidays in the Saturday Evening Post in 1930. And the illustrator put Santa in a red suit with a white trim. And this became the first image in America of the American Santa Claus. And that's why everybody wears, that's why when we just had Drunken Santa Day, whatever the hell that is on New York City, where everybody drunks as, dresses, excuse me, dresses up as slutty Santas, that's why they're wearing red and white, all because of Coca-Cola. Who the hell knew? I'm sure you knew that. This is just, I feel like, one of these facts. And I'm like, it's taken this long in my life to find out why Santa wears red with white fur. And it was a little depressing to find out it's because of a brand and it's advertising. Anyway. So this new variant of COVID is just rampant all over New York. I mean, today I'm recording this, like I said, on December 16th. So it's Thursday. I'm off of work today and all over the, I have my TV on and all over the news is uh, the, the variant is spreading. It's doubling in three days across New York City. The positivity rate doubles in three days on this uh, new virus spread. And it's upsetting. Uh, a lot of places are canceling non-essential events. Again! I mean, <sighs> NYU just canceled all non-essential events. Um, the, uh, the, Met, the Met just canceled, um, if you don't have the booster, if you don't have the booster, they are not going to uh, let you into the opera for all audience members. I don't have the booster shot yet. I don't know about you. I, My ex-husband got it. He made an, himself an appointment at Walgreens and he texted me the day he was going and he's like, oh, I'm going to get the booster. I didn't make you an appointment. Uh, you know, do you want me to try to see if I could get you one? And I was like, yes, no, of course. Because we got the, 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 for the vaccines together. Anyway, uh, he couldn't get me an appointment. The first booster appointment that I was able to get was at the end of January. So now I got to go back to the drawing board and see if I can get one sooner than that. Um, but disappointing, I wanted to go see Cinderella at the Met. And that's not going to happen now because I am boosterless at the current moment. Everything's crazy at the moment. I don't know if you've been doing your holiday shopping. I have been doing my shopping I'm very sad to report my daughters. They're going to be in the UK for Christmas uh, in Wales. They'll be uh, with their father and spending time with their grandparents. Uh, you know, I mean, they haven't seen their grandparents in three years. What am I going to do? Say no? Kick up a fuss? I had to say yes. Um, 
I used to go, you know, we used to switch off every other year, U.S. one year, Wales another year. I, I used to go. It's nice there. They celebrate Christmas different, though. Different than the Italian Americans, I'll tell you that much. Um, you know, obviously for us, we do Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. Maybe your family does the Eve bigger. My family always did Christmas Day bigger. But in in where my ex husband is from in Wales, they really only celebrate Christmas Day. The Eve is a day where they go around to friends' houses. They have cocktails. You know, they go from house to house and have a cocktail, or they go to the pub. It's much more, um, you know, friends in the community. It's nice. It's not really what I was used to when I would go, but but it's fine. So my my daughters are going, so I'm going to be alone for Christmas this year. I I'll be with my boyfriend, so you know we will we're gonna be at his family's house in Long Island, um, and, and then my family's house uh, that we're gonna be there on the eve, and then my family's house for the day. So I the only good thing I will say about this situation, although it makes me very sad, the only good thing is that I have a little bit more time to wrap the girls' gifts and everything like that because we're gonna do we're gonna have Christmas when they come back. We're not going to open presents before, obviously. We don't want to take away the joy of Santa. But one of the things that I got the kids, I think is a great gift if you if you are still in the market for presents for kids. It's a website called Wonderbly Wonder. W-O-N-D-E-R-B-L-Y. They do personalized books. I got them a couple of personalized books. I thought that was so cute. One of them that I got them, it's called Where Are You? And, you know, they put the names in the book and they give you a character. And it's like Where's Waldo, but it's personalized. I don't know about you. I used to love the Where's Waldo book. So I got them a couple of those. And, you know, I, I, I got them a lot of crap that they don't need, like Barbies and stuff. But I did try to, you know, I wanted to try to do some more meaningful gifts, I think. And while I don't know if a personalized book is so meaningful, I thought that was cute. Also, every year I get my girls um, from me, not from Santa. The only present that they get from mommy is I make them a, a photo book of everything that we've done in uh, the, that, that year. So I'm working on that and it's not going to be delivered for Christmas Day. So that's actually a blessing in disguise. I bought myself a new TV. Of course, that's what one does, right? You buy presents and then you buy a present for this one, buy one for yourself. I didn't buy anybody a TV, newsflash. But I uh, I bought myself a TV because my current TV, there's nothing wrong with it. It's an LG TV, but I got it in 2017. So it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't have certain channels on it for whatever reason. Some of the streaming channels, you know, um, I don't know, they didn't do deals with certain TV manufacturers, whatever. So uh, my LG TV can't get channels, get some of the streaming channels, Disney Plus, it can't get Hulu for whatever reason. So I bought myself a new TV and I'm going to be setting it up in the next couple days. And I'm excited because I want to watch the Sex and the City reboot. Have you seen it? Um, Just like that. That's obviously the name. I didn't see them filming it around the city. A lot of my friends saw, uh, you know, Carrie and Miranda and Charlotte filming all over the city. I didn't get to see them filming the ads. Um, the ads look good. I mean, they look older. And I think it's nice that they kept them older. It's much better that they kept them look, in my opinion, that they looked like that than some of the real housewives running around. You know, they're like 60 going on 20. I mean, they look ridiculous, at least from what I saw from the ads. But I'm trying to not read anything on social media about the Sex and the City reboot because people are putting spoilers all over the place. I saw a couple of things uh, mentioned and I... Don't want to read it. I want to I wanna watch it for myself. I don't know if you saw it. Uh, what I did do, though, this past weekend was I took the girls to see Aladdin, which was just the best thing ever. We had, oh my God, we had so much fun. Here I am singing the praises of TDF last weekend, the Theater Development Fund. You know, it's tdf.org if you want to buy cheap theater tickets. It's like the TKTS booth, but online. And I bought them these tickets for the show, Pinkalicious, little cartoon show. We get to the theater on the Saturday. My kids are all dressed up and they cancel the show. TDF, shame on you. You didn't even contact all of us customers and say that the show was canceled. And my kids were so upset. So we went to see Aladdin the next day as a super, super special treat. And it was, oh my gosh, magical. 
you got to see it. If you're in New York, you got to see it. Even if you go with your husband or your friends. I mean, no kids. No, it, just go. It was absolutely amazing. The costumes, the set. I was in such a good mood after the show. It. I don't. I don't know if it's because I haven't really seen a big Broadway production in a few years now, or it's because it was the magic of watching a show, you know, come to life of a movie that, you know, I watched, you know, years and years ago, or if it was the magic of my kids so excited, but it was amazing. The Whoever plays the genie, it, the name is escaping me, Black Eye, he was incredible. The music, the set, the costumes, everything. You absolutely got to go. Just the best. And let me say something, Okay. When we saw the Rockettes a few weeks ago, we sat uh, it, towards, we were sat like in the middle off to the side. Not not great seats. Pricey, but not great seats. But for Aladdin, we sat orchestra, like seven rows uh, from the front. And it, I don't know if you feel like this, but, you know, seeing a Broadway show is amazing. Seeing a Broadway show sitting so close, you know, not, you don't want to sit in the first, second, or third row where your neck got to look up, you got cricks in your neck the whole show. I'm talking about sitting, you know, where you could see, you don't have to strain your, your neck, but you're just right there front and center. It's incredible. I haven't um, seen too many shows where I'm right up at the front. The only other one that I saw uh, where I was up at the front like that was Chicago a million years ago. And that was amazing. But this was just incredible. Sitting this close and they, you know, watching, the, seeing the dancers and all their, their cut up bodies and, oh God, there's nothing like sitting in the orchestra in that 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 non-neck straining section um, for a Broadway show. I mean, if you could swing it, you just, you absolutely got to go to see Aladdin. Got to go. Read the reviews. You don't need me. Read the reviews. You know where I went the other day? After Aladdin, um, well, we came home after Aladdin, and then the next day I, I needed to get some gifts. And I was like, what am I going to get? What am I going to get? So I start, you know. I didn't really want to deal with lines at stores or whatever. So I went over to Italy and they have, if you really want to get some nice gifts for somebody and you don't want to buy them a thing, you don't want to get them, you know, clothes or jewelry, ah, eh, you're buying all that online, go to Italy. They had the most beautiful tins that I've ever seen. Tins of cookies, panettones in tins, you know, these like collectible, collectible, beautiful tins. The panettones that they had and the pandoros, you know, those are the Italian cakes, you know, with the, the fruit, the nuts, whatever. They, the, you know, the packaging was probably more beautiful than the cake actually tastes. Come on, and let's be serious. Not everybody likes panettone. And if, if you haven't had panettone, if you're not Italian, you're listening to it, this, it's like a brioche bread. It's like a sweet bread with raisins and nuts and, and fruits in it, dried fruits. But if you, if you, if you don't even like it, just buy one of these cakes from Italy. The design is so beautiful. You can't, you can't, go on the website, you'll see it. But one of the things that they had there that I thought was just the best was, and I saw this last year too around the holiday times. I actually might be mentioned it last year on the podcast. Dolce & Gabbana came out with a tin. Dolce & Gabbana partnered with a macaroni brand, a pasta brand, Di Martino. Side note, my family used to own Di Martino pasta brand. This was back in the 1900s in Italy, in Naples. And then they sold it. You know, one of those stories like, ah, we had a macaroni company, Di Martino, but then we sold it. And then who knew it was going to get so popular? This is like an old friend of mine who told me, she's an old lady, like in her 80s, and she told me that she had the opportunity to invest in Dunkin' Donuts back in the day, and they didn't because they thought it was ah, just some chop shop, you know, caught slinging coffee. Yeah, bad move. Anyway, so the the, the D. Martino and Dolce & Gabbana, they partnered up. They made these tins, these beautiful tins, bright blue, hot pinks, whatever. And inside the tins are packages of the macaroni, aprons, you know, placemats, all stuff you don't need. But they're just so nice. It's the nicest thing to bring, I think, for a host gift. They have all different price points and, and sizes or whatever. But I think it's so nice for a host gift or for that person that has everything. Um, so yeah, if you're in Italy, check those out. But if if you're not in New York, if you're not in Italy, just Google Dol Dolce & Gabbana Di Martino tin. You'll see them come up. You can get them shipped. They're expensive. I'm not going to lie. I think one of these tins were like $180. I don't need a tin with filled with macaroni for $180, okay? But 
they have cheaper ones and all all different kinds. All different kinds. They have these beautiful uh, round tins with these mini panatones also that are just absolutely gorgeous. Who needs the Danish blue, uh, the Danish cookies blue tin for your sewing kit anymore when you can have a Dolce Gabbana tin, right? We'll get to more gifts in a minute. I have a couple of ideas. Some some cute, some great, some just gag gifts, which are which are fun. But let me tell you this. The day I took the kids to Aladdin, okay, they were dying for Chick-fil-A after. So, you know, mommy delivered. We go to Chick-fil-A. These people, we order. First of all, there's no dining inside. Can you imagine? Here I am, mother, taking my two hungry kids to Chick-fil-A, just exactly what they wanted. We get in the place. I get. I order, and then I turn to the left, and they say the dining room's closed. Great. They had a little bar area where we could stand and eat the food. Then they had, you know, um, cords all around it and laminated Xerox things. The, the bar is closed, can't eat, great. So we take the food home. Get the food home, the nuggets, the fries, the whole thing. Mommy, you know, I got a couple of fries. They forgot to put the French fries in the bag. It's like nobody's working, okay? Then a couple days later, I was in H&M. Girls wanted to go to H&M, took them to H&M. They wanted to get, you know, they wanted to buy like something cute to wear for Christmas in Wales, very adorable. Got them these little crushed velvet dresses, little necklaces, Blah, blah, blah. Take the bags home. Open the bags. No necklace in the bag. I look at my receipt. I paid for the necklace. They didn't put it in the bag. And the same thing with Chick-fil-A. I look at the receipt. I paid for the, the, the fries. They didn't put it in the bag. Nobody wants to work these days. Not only does nobody want to work, everybody's just lazy. The people that are working, they're lazy. I'm sorry to say it. And I'm sorry if you work at H&M and you're listening to this. Or you work in Chick-fil-A and you're listening to this. But I just think everybody's like, fuck it. If you work in a store, you know, um... People are like, well, I can't work from home. My, my opinion. People are like, oh, I can't work from home. I'm just going to half-ass my job. And I apologize to anybody out there that's not half-assing their job. But that's what's going on right now. And it's so disappointing. I feel like sometimes we're living in we're living in weird times, but I do feel like we're living in this alternate universe, like forgetting to put things that you've paid for. And am I really, I mean, like, come on, let's be serious. Am I really, it was an honest, honest mistake, but am I really going to get in a cab or on the train and go travel somewhere to say, you forgot my $2 box of French fries or you got you forgot my daughter's $4 necklace? No, it's not even worth it. I'm just going to let it go. But it's definitely frustrating. And then the other frustrating thing, really fucking crazy frustrating for me, is the cab situation, the taxi situation in New York. And if you're here, you know about it. But if you're not, prepare yourself for when you come. Um, you know, there's not a lot of yellow cabs going on. We know this. They're not around. Uber and Lyft and the ride-sharing apps, they took those cabs right out of business, right? There's just so many of these uh, ride-sharing apps. Fine. But there's surge pricing. And I don't know if you've read about this. I just want to give you a firsthand example of what the surge pricing is. When we were at Aladdin, uh, we walked for a bit, and then we took a cab to Chick-fil-A, right? And that cab was $11.60. Fine. That's expensive to take a cab from a theater to a freaking fast food restaurant, but $11. We were done walking. Fine. Making them happy. It was their day. Adorable. Whatever. Fine. But before I jumped in a yellow cab, I checked on Uber. Can I get an Uber to Chick-fil-A? This is maybe going four blocks, a couple avenues. Let me tell you how much Uber was charging. $65. $65 for a cab to take me a couple avenues and a few blocks. And when I jumped in the yellow cab and I paid $11.60, I felt like I was getting the bargain of the lifetime. When I got home and I cleared my mind of the whole thing, I had to say to myself, did I almost pay $65 to go to a fast food restaurant that I could walk to? One, yes. And two... $11 $11 is even a lot of money to spend to take a few blocks. But this is the situation. They, the, these ride-sharing apps, they're surge pricing. They, it's like a war on New Yorkers. That's really what it's like. And people are paying. People are paying. It's like, can't this be regulated? I said this to my boyfriend. Can't we regulate this? I said, look, I'm all for capitalism, free commerce, do whatever you want. There's private businesses, there's public business businesses, public businesses, obviously, we know these are regulated, private, you could do whatever the hell you want. But these private businesses, Uber, I mean, they, they're just completely taking advantage of people. They're completely taking advantage. Let me tell you something. 
I've spoke about how New York City is dangerous at night. And, you know, for me, performer, walking around, jumping on the subway and the bus, you know, at 10, 11 o'clock at night is not something I'm doing. So I would drive when I had a car before my car was totaled. But I would drive. And if I'm not driving, I'm taking a taxi, Uber, Lyft, whatever. There are people, and some of them are myself, where we go and we put, you know, our final destination at night, a uh, home, you know, of wherever we are, whatever club theater we're in, and the pricing is so outrageous that we are not doing it. You know, we'll we'll we'll, we'll partner up with somebody. You know, we'll share, we'll we'll carpool, whatever. But a hundred dollars to get from Greenwich Village to the Upper East Side just because Uber feels like surge pricing, or I don't know. I, I don't even know. I don't even know. I I don't even know what to say. It just it feels illegal. It it really feels illegal. And and I don't know what the solution is. I don't know if you get some public officials or something to to um have an intervention. But when I was talking to this with my boyfriend, uh, he had said to me that the ride sharing apps paid off city officials. So, you know, they're not really getting involved. I I find that hard to believe. That's what he said. I didn't look it up. I'm really just sharing the situation. If you're coming into the city and you expect to get around via cab, budget for that, okay? Because it's absolutely ridiculous. And we had a terrible storm months ago, a rainstorm. Uh, in New York and, you know, power was out and the storm was going into the subways. It was crazy. And there were a lot, a lot of people um, that w- that rely on public transportation, comics I'm talking about. And they could not get home, get around, and they could not afford to take these cars. And they were walking. And it's just terrible. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. Got to do something about that. Got to do something. Back to gifts. If you want to be an asshole and you want to give somebody the gift of nothing, you can go on Amazon.com and buy that, just so you know. I mean, I don't even know how the, this, the gift of nothing retargeted itself to me, but it did. And uh, it's a gag gift, a novelty gift. Look it up if you want. It's twelve ninety five. If you want to, so basically what I'm saying, if you want to spend $13 and flush it down the toilet, go on Amazon, buy somebody. The person that is everything, buy them the gift of nothing. It's literally nothing. It's a, it's a, it's a little uh, paper laminated, plastic-coated paper thing that says, congratulations, you just got the gift of nothing. I guess you could, if you have bratty teenagers, instead of giving them a lump of coal, you could put this in their stocking. Can you imagine? Oh, my God, they would be so upset. Apparently, though, when you read the reviews, they change the packaging. The packaging in the picture is better than what you actually receive. But nothing is nothing. Bupkis. I don't even, you know, but listen. They got, I have it right here. 287 ratings. They have 287 ratings on the gift of nothing. So look, the guy who invented this, he's he's making a little bit of dough, you know? If you want a real great gift. <laughs> One of my favorite things, I'm going to buy this for somebody, maybe myself. There's an artist and his name is John Donahue. You can go to his website. <clears throat> it's this is the best. This is the best gift that I found so far. The best thing I found so far this holiday season. John Donahue, an artist in New York City. He uh, draws, he illustrates small illustrations of all of the best restaurants in New York. Just hand-drawn small pictures of the famous restaurants in New York. Rayo's, you know, I don't know, uh, Cafe Alsace. Oh, Oh, just everything that's been around forever. Even restaurants that are closed. 21 Club, he has... The Selka, the diner downtown, that's amazing. The website is alltherestaurants.com. Alltherestaurants.com. It's the best that I found. You could buy this print of this uh, illustration that he did. I think he frames them. Maybe framing is extra. I don't know. I didn't order one yet. I saw the prices. They're like $55 to about $100. I absolutely love this. I absolutely love it. He does restaurants, draws restaurants from New York, Paris, and London. I think it's the best gift ever. If there's a restaurant that you've gotten engaged in or you've had a big celebration in or maybe you had your first date or maybe a special place that you go, is this not the best? Is this not the best? I, I, I This by far is amazing. I had my daughter's uh, christening at a restaurant on the Upper East Side. Uh, it's no longer. It's called Bayo Glue. Amazing. It was the most amazing Turkish food in Manhattan. They had an upstairs party room and we had it there. Of course, my mother was like, you're having her christening in a Turkish restaurant? Really, Elise? I'm like, all right, please. Every freaking event that we do, okay, what do we have to get a plate of macaroni and, and chicken parmesan? Like I'm doing something different. 
This was back in 2014. But I did in the Turkish restaurant. It was amazing. Restaurants since closed. I don't know why. They should have just raised their prices. I would have still gone if they, if they were raising their prices because it was amazing. But this website, alltherestaurants.com, by this guy, John Donahue, he has a picture of Bayo Glue. So I'm probably going to pick up that one. Maybe a couple others. I don't know. We'll see. I just think it's the best. They have my favorite, of course, Bemelman's Bar. If you haven't been to Bemelman's, by the way, you got to go there. That's the bar inside the Carlisle Hotel. Absolutely fabulous. They have that illustration. So many good things. Best gift ever, in my opinion. Best, creative, unique. Can't really buy it in a store. Wonderful. Two other great gifts that I really like for the holidays. If you have somebody, New York-centric, diehard New Yorker, live here, you, whatever, you just want them. I like the Bergdorf Goodman cookbook. That's about, I don't know, $30. I saw it when I was in Bergdorf not too long ago. No, that's not a store that I shop in. I just like to walk around in there and feel like I could shop in. I mean, it's like, come on, I have TJ Maxx budget, but a Bergdorf Goodman taste. Could you blame me? I mean, like, come on, hello. Like, I live here. I, I, I'm alive. Uh, but, you know, so I was like, oh, my God, look, a Bergdorf Goodman cookbook, something I can afford. I like the book because I like the illustrations on the front. I, By the way, I should say I draw and paint. Not so much anymore because my creative outlet is comedy and, and performing and all that. But I, I always liked illustrations and drawing. And the cover of the Bergdorf Goodman cookbook is just so wonderful. The illustrations, there's a lady in a black boat neck shirt eating a little salad with a big giant green pom-pom hair hat on. It's wonderful. Um, and it's the, the the picture on the front cover of the cookbook is inside the Bergdorf Goodman restaurant, but the restaurant in Bergdorf's. But anyway, um, you could buy this cookbook on also Amazon. You don't have to go have to be at the store to buy it. But the reviews, when you read the reviews, they say it's just okay. The recipes in the cookbook are just okay. The stories are good. It's been around for a while, but I do think it's a very cute New York gift. And the last uh, very New York gift that I did buy, I bought this for my aunt uh, because I'm going there on Christmas and this is like going to be my little host gift to her. I like to give her a little something she's hosting, you know, or anybody who they're hosting. This is what I got her. I got her a book. It's called New Yorkers. It's a hardcover book. It just came out. There's a bookstore on the Upper East Side that's the absolute best uh, corner bookstore. It's on Madison and like 92nd or something. And they curate the best selections of books. And this bookstore has been around forever. And they had this book in the store. And uh, basically, the, all the book is, is 70 hardcover book, beautiful coffee table book. It's 70 pictures inside the book of New Yorkers inside their apartments and their studios and it's captured by this super cool photographer. So coffee table book, and it's everyone from just the guy on the street to a drag queen, to a store owner, to a, a, a psychic, to a cab driver. That's everybody in the book. It's literally something I absolutely love. I'm a visual person. I think this makes for a great gift. You don't even need to know what they like if you're giving this as a gift for somebody. All they need to know is that you're from New York and you're giving them this book about New Yorkers. I think it makes a great host gift. So I got that. That I am excited about. Um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much like it in terms of gifts, what I've been doing. The only other thing that I saw that was very interesting, I don't know anything about it. A friend told me she got it. It's uh, called an ear seed kit. Do you know about this? An ear seed kit. If you Google it, um, what you're going to find is you're going to find a little box uh, and it what looks like a bunch of cartilage earrings. It looks like studs for your ears. And um, it's a beauty thing. It's a beauty gift for unisex guys, girls, whoever. And it's part of um, traditional Chinese medicine. Um, and it's, a, it's, it's something that you could do. It's an acupuncture kit. It's something that you could do. You take like a tweezer and you take one of these little things that look like a stud earring and you put it in diff at different parts inside your ear and around your ear. And it's a Chinese medicine technique to reduce stress and pain and get balance in your life. And there's all different, it tells you all the different places to put these little ear seeds, right? And um, the box has, I don't know, like 20 to 30 ear seeds. And some of the oh, some of the kits you could find come with tweezers already. Some of the actual 
uh, seeds for your ears are stainless steel. Some of them are 24 karat gold. Some of them are crystals. Some of them are hideous and they look like little red things that probably look like pimples in your ear. But they're all over the place. I saw them on Amazon. I saw them um, at this website within, this is my, the website my friend told me, within WTHN. Um, I saw them at Saks on their website, e- the ear seed kit. I thought that was a cool gift. So the one, um, and then another one that I think, I think the one at Saks is called Plant the Seed Ear Kit. I don't know. If you have a friend that's into new age medicine, maybe it's yourself or maybe ancient medicine or maybe you're just stressed out and you can't go for acupuncture or afford therapy. I don't know. Why don't you put some jewels in your ears? It <laughs> doesn't sound so terrible to me. They're like 50 bucks. I think it makes for an awesome gift for um, a busy person, a busy person or maybe a young person that's starting out in the work world and that kind of thing. So that's that's it. That's my holiday gift shtick. That, that, that's where I'm at. That's just totally where I'm at. Um, I'm wrapping up work for the most part this week, you know, uh, trying to get everything done. I am taking off the week between Christmas and New Year's. Slight disappointing news on that front. I was supposed to go to Italy. I was uh, flying out to Milan on December 25th, the night of Christmas. I was flying out, overnight flight, get in Milan, first thing in the morning, arrive at like 6 a.m., Um, and then I was spending a few days in Milan and then I was going to Lake Como just to really chill out, chill out, relax, hike. I'm not a hiker, but you know, I like to say I do it. Just be outdoors, get a massage, eat delicious food, gain back all the weight that, you know, I took off in my pretend diet. Uh, But my doctor told me that I can't go because of my concussion. So womp womp, how to cancel my trip, how to cancel my trip. I'm really disappointed about that. Um, oh, such a bummer. Like, actually, I'm really, really disappointed. I'm desperate for a change of scenery, and I'm desperate to get away. Yes, I've been, I went to Florida a few times, you know, in the last couple of years, visiting my mom in her new condo. I, uh, I've been to out east, Long Island, a few times, you know, which was nice, but I haven't been away away, you know, and I'm dying to go away away, and I was so excited to go to Italy, so excited to just Be there and do nothing. And there's something to be said about being in another country where you don't speak the same language and you kind of could just walk around and get lost in the city, sort of just the winding roads, fine, interesting things, sort of the romance of it all, Um, and and not have to feel like you could, you have to talk to people or you even understand what the other people are saying, right? I love that. I lived in Italy when I was in uh, college. I did study abroad. I lived there for a few months. I lived in Rome. So I've been to Milan. I haven't been to Lake Como. I was hoping to go, hoping to chill out, maybe get a George Clooney sighting. So sad. He, you know, is off the market. But anyway, moving right along, I will find something else to do. But I am off. So I'm wrapping this up this week of work. You know, I don't know what kind of performing I'll be doing. Um... Because everybody, everything is pretty much shut down. I'm keeping my eye out, though, definitely on the event news. And you should, too. But keep me posted. Keep me posted. Tell me. Tell me what you've been buying for Christmas. I, I, I'm, I am curious to know what you're doing, what you're cooking. I, uh, I'm going to be making the fruit cake. I will. I don't know if I shared the recipe with you last time. I'll have to double check. If I didn't, I will because it's delicious. I'm making the fruit cake, the British fruit cake with the kids. You know, it's really not terrible. It's pretty good, and it lasts for a whole year. The British people eat a year old cake, and then we wonder why they have no teeth. Okay. Anyway, that's it for the Elise Delucci show today. Quote closing off on the quote. Roy Smith, I think he's a preacher. Um, he says, he who not has Christmas in his heart will never find it under the tree. That's right, people. So for all this talk we're doing about material things, doesn't make you happy. Not what the spirit of Christmas is about, obviously. Family and friends. Very sad. I won't be with my daughters, but that's okay. I will be doing my podcast next week, of course, as usual. So I will talk to you then. Take care. Ciao, ciao.